journey. We had uh, finished the second journey. And what happens is he turns around and starts his third apostolic journey. What we're going to do is review and then continue along on the journey. Now, my glasses here, this is going to block me. Let's see, this is. Um, so it was a very eventful journey. Paul and Silas started out by road in uh, Galatia. They picked up Timotheus and Luke along the way, and they were waved into Europe, into Macedonia, by a vision uh, of a man of Macedonia. And the book of Galatians could have been written here, somewhere in 166, after uh, Paul has passed through Galatia, because he does say, you're so soon removed. So that's one place. Or right after his third journey, when he passes through Galatia, it's it really is hard to tell. And those are the spots where he could have written. There's other evidences and we can discuss them. Uh, and the uh, eventful journey uh, started in, well, in Macedonia and Philippi where Paul and Silas were jailed. There was an earthquake. Uh, they departed uh, after they got out of jail and uh, obviously established a few things. They left Luke and Philippi. They went to Thessalonica, caused a ruckus, and were sent away. They went to Berea. The Bereans checked what they said. They checked the scriptures um, nobly, or more nobly than the Thessalonicans. But they were immediately um, pursued by unbelieving Jews and were sent. Paul was sent to the sea, and he ended up in Athens. And from there, he, um, he preached to, to the city almost departed and came to Corinth where he stayed two years. Phil? Yes? Now, just a suggestion. You want to put your uh, display on presentation mode? My display on presentation oh, mode. Your, po your PowerPoint. Uh, then I can't see myself, eh? That's where it gets. You will. You will. Be you will. I will. So yeah. I go on uh, display. That'd be using. No, no, you're just within the app. Yeah, yeah within got, the application. You got it. You got it. I got it. Yeah. Thank you. See, this is where I need some technology, uh, some advice. Okay, well, first and thec second Thessalonians were most likely written from Corinth during that two-year period, uh, as, as Paul had established Thessalonica, but he, he was, uh, you know, he didn't get a chance to see them again. Uh, he may have, but he obviously had things to say to them, since he didn't have much time with them because they chased them away. And I'm just reviewing, actually, here. So um, the, the geography is, the upper part here is Macedonia. There's Philippi, Thessalonica, Berea, down to Athens in, in Achaia, or Greece, and then Corinth, where he stayed two years, and then went back <clears throat> through Jerusalem to Antioch. Uh, he left fellow laborers. So this is something that, uh, you know, it's, it's, these are quick verses. Uh, when you're reading it, you don't really see it, but it's nice to collect the information and see it. He left Luke and Philippi for quite a while, at least two years, until uh, Acts chapter 20, verse 6, which we will see tonight. Uh, he left Aquila and Priscilla in Ephesus on the way back to Jerusalem and Antioch. He left Silas and Timotheus in Corinth. He didn't take them with him. And of course, we hear at the beginning of his second journey, he left elders in every Galatian church, which would be Lystra, Derby, Iconium, Antioch, and so on. Again, we only have what's mentioned. It's by no means complete. Uh, for instance, there's a phrase that I'm chasing up. Uh, and the question is, when did Paul go to Illyricum, which is where Zdenka comes from, Dalmatia, Croatia? Uh, we see him mentioning it in Romans 15, 19, which would be Acts chapter 20. But there's no real indication. He must have been in Macedonia and went up the western coast. But I don't know. So there's a, there's a lot of questions in Acts. Uh, here's some questions. Again, if you're looking for body of Christ language, it's very difficult, if non-existent, to find. Um, well, what did Paul say or preach? Summarizing 
the second journey, he did go to the Jew first and then to the Greek. And you see that as his manner was, he always went into the local synagogue. He reasoned with the Jews and the devout Greeks, you know, the, the proselytes or, or the, any Gentiles that, that would go to synagogue. He would dispute, persuade, he'd talk about the Christ, how the Christ would have to die and rise from the dead. And that Jesus of Nazareth who appeared to him uh, is Christ. And it was a kingdom message, plus whatever Paul could add from his personal revelation, that the Gentiles be saved. There's no body of Christ language. Uh, and we, we, we also looked at his letter to the Thessalonians. We see that caring heart of Paul for, for those who followed and believed his good news as a mother and as a father. Those were analogies that he, he, he saw himself as being to the new converts. So to the Greek, uh, we see a lot of language to the, say the non-Jew in Athens, because he did talk to a lot of the Greeks who knew nothing about Judaism. And uh, he, he focused on God being the creator, that, that God could not be made into a piece of wood and made into an idol, that all of humanity is an offspring, not a child, but an offspring of one blood uh, from God and therefore has a piece of God in them from, the, from God being the creator. And that there's a judge that's going to judge uh, mankind, uh, Jesus of Nazareth, who assuredly, and Paul assured them, he was raised from the dead, and he told the Greeks to repent and believe his message. Again, even though we want to read, <laughs> we desperately want to read uh, the body of Christ and the gospel of grace, um, it's not really there. So that's my summary of, the, of what we've seen so far. Are there any questions? And I can't see hands raised or anything. So you, you unmute and ask a question if you want to. Okay, go ahead. Um, have you seen on the map where Ilirechium is? Uh, yes. Yeah, it's right up north, quite a ways north um, of Macedonia. I, and I don't think I have it on this one, but it'd be way up north of Macedonia, yes, up the coast. Way up north. Yes, that's oh. Dal Dalmatia, that's Croatia. That's all up there. And Paul mentions that he, well, we could look at the reference in Romans 15, 19. Yeah. I mean, just the way he says it, there's Romans 15, 19. And we're, we're going to look at this chapter late, you know, as we go, but um, just looking at 19, let's go. Um, yeah, 19. Through mighty signs and wonders by the power of the Spirit of God, so that from Jerusalem and round about unto Illyricum, I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. Yes. Yay. So I have strived to preach the gospel, not where Christ was named, lest I should build upon another mound foundation. But as written, to whom he was not spoken of, they shall see, they that have uh, not heard shall understand, for which cause also I've been much hindered from coming to you Romans. You see? So he mentions going there, but we don't see it in the book of Acts. Now, he could have made some trips to Thessalonica and Macedonia during the two years of Corinth. Again, it doesn't say that. So, but that's a reference we have in Acts 20, that he went to Illyricum. Or that he, right? Well, I've lost my reference now. So, uh, any, is that your question, Vivian? Oh, I just was one. Yeah, I knew where it was, but I wondered if other people had seen on the map exactly you know where that is located it's so yes. far north way up yeah western yeah. macedonia and above yeah. yes oh um, yeah almost you could swim to italy to the east right. coast but that zeninka would know where it is mm. she's from there from illyricum so she's an illyricumite <laughs> yeah. it's a Dalmatian, like the dog <laughs> yeah. yeah yes i am huh? That's a stylish dog with spots. 
<laughs> yeah, that's right. Yes. Fantastic. So this is interesting. When you read this, you start looking at the geography and following it. it you know, to me, it comes alive because it puts a lot more. And we'll see that as, as Paul talks about uh, going to see uh, the Romans, because we're going to be talking about his, his intentions. So if we can go to Acts chapter 18, verse 23. That's the next spot on his journey. And as you can see, he just went to Antioch, turned around, and, and, and went back. He was missing the road, as it were. So I'm going to read um, Acts 18, 22, and 23. 22 is the end of his second apostolic journey. And when he had landed at Caesarea and gone up and saluted the church, he went down to Antioch. And after he had spent some time there, he departed and went over all the country of Galatia and Phrygia in order, strengthening all the disciples. So this is the beginning of his third journey. Just starts right there, 1823. So I'm going to just answer, you know, the typical questions. Where did Paul go? Well, he traveled all over Galatia and Phrygia. So we can see now that Antioch doesn't seem to be the center of the story of the narrative as we read, but wherever Paul is, that's where the story is now. Yeah. So, yeah. So I just noticing in verse 23, as you read, yeah. that Paul strengthening all the disciples. Yes. So if he's strengthening the disciples, then that's still a kingdom message, would it not be? Yes, as far as we can tell, yes. So that's where, and you see, that's where we, we're trying to place when Paul um, received the gospel of grace the way we understand it today. And it looks like it's somewhere around here, perhaps. And that's why some people would place the book of Galatians right after this verse. Because now he went all over Galatia, and he saw something, and he's 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 going to write them. But that's that. I mean, that's how I understand it. So it's right. It's either here or back in Acts sixteen. Well, they would be disciples in Caesarea. Um, because yeah, that would have been um, it's in Israel, Philip, right? Philip's disciples in Caesarea. Yeah, and his four daughters. Yeah. Right, yeah, we that you see from Acts chapter eight. Right, Philip settled after the scattering. He settled in Caesarea. So there's always been a, a church there. But that's Acts twenty to eighteen twenty two. Yeah. So, um, oh yeah, here. Well, we can see the map. As you can see, all over Galatia would have been, you know, all the churches he's, he's been visiting on his first and second journey. And Phrygia would be, where's Phrygia? Thank you. Yes. So up there. So, uh, you know, he, um, yeah. So it'd be that whole territory. And as you'll see, he, he'll, he'll go to the upper coasts and come down to Ephesus. But now I'm running ahead of myself. Whom did he meet? Again, Van, you're right at, you're on the ball. He met the disciples of the kingdom gospel. When we see the word disciples, we know what that means. Uh, how long was he there? It just says he spent some time there. I, I don't know what that means. He, he spent some time in Antioch, sorry, before he started this journey. Uh, sorry, he spent some time in Antioch. So I, we don't know how long, but you know, enough time to strengthen the disciples, I guess. And that's basically all we know he did or said or preached was he strengthened them. So he strengthened them with the word of God. He strengthened them with fellowship and um, and community. So I'm sure he had a lot to say. And if the book of Galatians was written here, he had a lot to say. Um, there. Let me just. Yep. 
Yeah, so we've been we've, we've been through there, I guess. Okay, so could the book of Galatians Galatians have been written right after this visit? So that's I, I throw it out there. Uh, no one knows for sure. There's two camps. But, uh, let's see. So now there's an interlude um, where more disciples. The word disciples, more disciples are introduced to us before we get on with the journey. So let's just look at this because I think it's placed here uh, in the narrative to, to, to give us uh, the flavor and the basis. All the disciples are helping Paul uh, in the churches as fellow laborers, and we run into some more. We run into Apollos and the Twelve. So let me uh, continue. So Acts 18, 24 to 28. A certain Jew named Apollos, born at Alexandria, an eloquent man and mighty in the scriptures, came to Ephesus. This man was instructed in the way of the Lord, and being fervent in the spirit, he spake and taught diligently the things of the Lord, knowing only the baptism of John. And he began to speak boldly in the synagogue, whom, when Aquila and Priscilla had heard, they took him unto them and expounded unto him the way of God more perfectly. And when he was disposed to pass into Achaia, the brethren wrote, exhorting the disciples to receive him, who when he was come, helped them much which had believed through grace. For he mightily convinced the Jews, and that publicly, showing by the scriptures that Jesus was Christ. So as you can see, this Apollos is on his way. Um, Achille and Priscilla show him a little bit more, they show that Jesus was Christ uh, beyond the baptism of John. And then they, um, he keeps on going to Achaia. That would be Corinth. And we know that Apollos was in Corinth from the letters. And um, he helped the disciples there very much through grace. We can talk about that later. And um, let's... It's interesting that, you know, how slow information moved in those days. Yes. Because, you know, here we are, I don't know, some good 20 years after the cross. And Apollos is still only knowledgeable of John's baptism. Yeah. Which is, which is repent for the kingdom is at hand. Yeah, that is. That's, that's really quite stunning. Yes, Ken. I just wanted to add that uh, I'm just kind of stunned, you know, looking at this and thinking about for, for so long, you know, reading passages like this and making it a Christian <laughs> passage. Yeah. You know, and, and now it just, I read it and it just, it's so different, you know, that this is not speaking about Christians or body of Christ. Yeah. Especially the yeah, part well, we, we all did. <laughs> we were all there. Pardon? Yeah, we were all there. This was yeah. this was all to us. Yeah. yeah. It's Jews yeah. and disciples. Jews in verse 28 and disciples in verse 27. Yes, David, you have to unmute yourself. I um I just um I think one of the reasons me uh, Apollos since he was born at Alexandria in Egypt he would I get he would have been either a Gentile or a far off Jew who had traveled like every Pentecost or you know for every one you know one of those Jewish feasts right he would they'd all migrate to Israel and that's yeah. probably when he heard John the Baptist and then returned home. But he, yes. he obviously wasn't there for the when the day of Pentecost was fully come. Yeah, yeah, yeah. obviously not that. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I mean, people. I think there, people say that Apollos could have written the book of Hebrews, you know, because because he was mighty in the scriptures. But um, um, maybe, maybe after you're done your presentation, I'll I, I'll I'll share, I'll um, I'll I'll share. Uh, just a couple notes I took, just something to think about about the book of Hebrews. But yeah, yeah, no, no, that's fine because uh, um, that'd be good. 
So we're just, uh, you know, we're just warming up here. Uh, the next introduction before we get back to Paul, well, Paul is actually here, but uh, is, is to these, um, the 12. And uh, I've always been fascinated by this one. It came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, so you see, he, he went on with a letter from the brethren that were, sorry, give me a sec, uh, in Ephesus, from Aquila, Priscilla, and the other believers, whoever they, they were, um, uh, uh, on to Corinth. Paul, having passed through the upper coasts of Asia, uh, that would be Troas and then down, came to Ephesus, finding certain disciples. So he found disciples. He said unto them, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And they said unto him, we have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. So again, Brother Van, to your comment, this is 20 years on, there's a whole bunch of believers. They would be perhaps baptism of John believers. Uh, they they yeah. haven't heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. Maybe this was a group that Apollos was with, or who knows. And he said unto them, unto what then were ye baptized? And they said unto John's baptism. Well, there you go. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him, which should come after him, that is on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them. They spake with tongues and prophesied. So they got gifts. Prophets. Yes. Yes. Yep. They became prophets. And they spoke with tongues. Again, a Pentecostal experience. And all the men were about 12. Now, maybe there were 11 and maybe there were 13. But uh, Luke makes a point of using a number that represents Israel. And he says, all the men were about 12. He, he wants to really hit it home. This We're talking about Israel. We're talking about the kingdom message. We're talking about, you know, the Jewish thing. <laughs> he really... It just, to me, that always, I didn't understand about disciples and, and the gospel perhaps not being presented uh, and so on, but I understood about 12. This always hit me. So if I can just summarize, I just summarize this interlude. Uh, we see Apollos, a certain Jew, we've probably talked about this. He was to be brought up to speed with current information. And that's why I always like the word perfected or more perfectly, it really means completeness. You know, we use it for the word to be mature, but it also means complete. And when I studied economics, we studied capitalism. One of the properties of the capitalism that we studied it was called pure and perfect competition, where there was full information. Everybody who buys and sells has theoretically full information on the product, and that's why the pricing mechanism doesn't need a dictator or socialism. The market system is so perfect. That's the propaganda I learned. Anyway, <laughs> studying <laughs> economics. Um, another thing that I found fascinating uh, in this uh, was the use of the word the way. Okay. In, in Acts 9-2, uh, when Paul wanted to persecute uh, the church of God, he called them this way. Right. In Acts 9-2, that if he found any of this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. Uh, we just read in Acts 18-26 that Aquila and Priscilla took Apollos and expounded unto him the way of God more perfectly. In Acts 22-4, Paul's talking again about his conversion. He said, and I persecuted this way unto the death. Um, Acts 19.9, and we're just about to go there uh, after the 12. Um, he talks about when divers were hardened and believed not, but speak evil of that way. So that way is, is the message that Jesus is the Christ. Acts 19.23, it talked about the same time there arose no small stir. This is the, I think, the Ephesian silversmiths about that way. So they were quite known as the way. And then uh, even when Paul gave his third account of his um, conversion, uh, the comment here is Felix heard these things having more perfect knowledge of that way. 
He deferred them and said, when Lysias, the chief captain, shall come down, I will know the uttermost. So um, that way is used quite a bit for uh, the gospel of the kingdom, the gospel of uh, that, that Paul and, and the disciples. I guess the, the, this is the disciples that we're talking about. Yeah, and then, and then later, before Felix, yeah. Paul, Paul was referred to as a ringleader of the sect of the Nazarenes. Uh, Nazarenes. Yeah, yeah. Ring, he was a ringleader of the sect of the Nazarenes. So, and that shows me that, you know, you think at Pentecost with the Holy Ghost that everything will be perfect. You know, the word, the apostles couldn't make a mistake. They, you know, whatever was given to them, something had changed when uh, they broke into sects. Mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, they were Judaizer believers of Jesus, those who were wanted the law uh, with, the, you know, like they were wanted the law invoked. And, and so all of a sudden it became imperfect is what I'm saying, you know. Uh, what else? Oh, uh, yes. Can I say More. something real quick? Is that okay? Yeah, go ahead. You're muted, David. Sorry, uh, in 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 the previous, just in the previous slide, um, um, I was wanted. I wanted to suggest an idea, and that is where um, where uh, oh oh sorry, the one where Paul is talking about where Paul is talking to those twelve guys. Thanks. Yeah. Sorry. Um, so uh, this just a suggestion. I'll put this out there uh, for you to th think about. Uh, then Paul then said, Paul, John very baptized with wa with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people, this people, the people that they should believe on him, which should come after him. That is on Christ Jesus. Now, next, the next verse is still Paul talking. When they heard this, meaning they that heard John the Baptist heard this, they were baptized by John the Baptist in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul laid his hands upon them, meaning the people that Paul was speaking to, then the Holy Ghost came on them. So I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm putting, I'm just, I'm suggesting that Paul didn't rebaptize these people. That, so did uh, Paul. That, uh, when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. That, yeah. that's, still, I, that I, that's still Paul talking. Yeah, That's I don't see. Dialogue. Yeah, I don't see water in that in that second baptism. It's verse five, Acts nineteen five. Yeah. <laughs> so it, it, what it's, they heard, and then they were identified in the name of the Lord Jesus, as opposed to being dunked. Yes. Oh, I see. So, so this this is this is the the baptism of the Spirit you're talking. Yes. Yes. Indeed. Oh, that that's that all. That's another great. Yes. Thank you. I I. That's a great way to uh, look. Okay. Approach that it. It's un, it's unfortunate. The word baptism <laughs> has become a synonymous with the word water, <laughs> uh, just like uh, the word gospel always means salvation. You know it. Uh, some awesome. of these words, you know, the word, some of these words uh, are bigger than they are meant to be. Yeah. You know, uh, I have a question regarding that. If you go to Acts chapter 2, verse 38, ah. is that water? Acts chapter 2. Oh, Acts chapter 2. Verse 38. Because that was the next step after, right, at Pentecost. Peter says, then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. Well, and you shall yeah. receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Is that water? I, I'm, I think pretty likely that's water, yeah. yeah because yeah. Philip baptized in water the U Ethiopian eunuch. Yeah, they were still still were doing still the baptizing. still doing the uh, the water at that time. It was it's oh. it's the transition is over here now when they're saying that they only knew of John's baptism. That was a baptism of water. 
This is now, now the baptism that uh, Paul speaks of is of identification. Yeah, and it doesn't say. They found a lake, they went into the water, they, uh, no one's holding them back from being baptized. You know, it's, it's like the conversation, the, the whole time with them. Yeah. Okay, that's good. Yeah, it's, it's um, without quotation marks, again, it uh, has to be looked at. I threw in a couple more things here under Apollos. Uh, there's a more excellent way. When Paul writes that, he's talking about love in, in the community of believers. And um, Hebrews talks about a new and living way when, he, when they talk about the, the priesthood, about Jesus, and so on. But that's another study. Again, I didn't... Uh... Is there this more excellent way also mentioned in uh, Acts 8, 19? Are you saying that? Uh, no. Okay. I'm just, no, I'm just uh, moving on to the fourth bullet here. Yes. Yeah, the Paul uses the word way and again, as a more excellent way. Oh, I see. He the talks about love. In First yeah. Corinthians 13, oh, well. yes. There yes. is the way, excellent way, and living way. Yes, all right, yes. I get it. Um, the 12 were referred to as certain disciples or men. Apollos goes on to Corinth, that we said, and the 12 go with Paul to Ephesus. As you will, see, as we will see, uh, they stuck with him and separated from the synagogue, and um, met together daily. So, if I can get someone to read the next slide, read uh, Ephesians 19. We'll go to Ephesus, uh, verse one, and then verses eight to twenty. Uh, Sister Vivian, can I get you to read that one? Okay. So we're reading Acts 19, verse 1, and it's about Ephesus. And then 8 to 20. Yes. yes, I see that. Yeah, just skip it. Yeah, skip okay. it. Okay. Uh, verse 1. And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coasts, came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples. And we're going to drop down to verse 8. Mm. And he said, and he went into the synagogue and spake boldly for the space of three months, disputing and persuading the things concerning the kingdom of God. But when divers were hardened and believed not, but spake evil of that way before the multitude, he departed from them and separated the disciples, disputing daily in the school of one Tyrannus. And this continued by the space of two years, so that all they which dwelt in Asia heard the word of the Lord Jesus, both Jews and Greeks. And God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul, so that from his body were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs or aprons, and the diseases departed from them, and the evil spirits went out of them. Then certain of the vagabond Jews, exorcists, took upon them to call over them, which had evil spirits by the name of the Lord Jesus, saying, we adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preacheth. And there were seven sons of one Stephen, a Jew and chief of the priests, which, so, which did so. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are ye? And the man in whom the evil spirit it was leapt on them and overcame them and prevailed against them, so that they fled out of the ha that house naked and wounded. And this was known to all the Jews and Greeks also dwelling at Ephesus. And fear fell on them all. And the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. And many that believed came and confessed and showed their deeds. Many of them also, which used curious arts, brought their books together and burned them before all men. And they counted the price of them and found it 50,000 pieces of silver. So mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. Thank you, Vivian. Whoa. Oh, we have a little more. <laughs> oh. Um, are you good, Vivian? 
If you want me to continue reading or someone else wants to read, I don't mind. I can't see any hands up or anything. You want me to continue? Yes, please. Yes, okay. verse 31. Verse 21. After these things were ended, Paul purposed in the spirit when he had passed through Macedonia and Ikea to go to Jerusalem, saying, after I have been there, I must also see Rome. So he sent to Macedonia two of them that ministered unto him, Timotheus and Erastus. But he himself stayed in Asia for a season. And the same time, uh, there arose no small stir about that way. For a certain man named Demetrius, a silversmith, which made silver shrines for Diana, brought no small gain unto the craftsmen, whom he called together with the workmen of like occupation, and said, Sirs, ye know that by this craft we have our wealth. Moreover, ye see and hear that not alone at Ephesus, but almost throughout all Asia, this Paul hath persuaded and turned away much people, saying that they be no gods which are made of, with hands, so that not only this our craft is in danger to be set at naught, but also that the temple of the great goddess Diana should be despised, and her magnificence should be destroyed, whom all Asia and the world worshipeth. And when they heard these sayings, they were full of wrath, and cried out, saying, Great is Diana of the Ephesians. And the whole city was filled with confusion, and having caught Gaius and Aristarchus, men of Macedonia, Paul's companions in travel, they rushed with one accord into the theatre. And Paul, and, and when Paul would have entered in unto the people, the disciples suffered him not. And, and certain of the chief of Asia, uh, which were his friends, sent unto him, desiring him that he would not adventure himself into the theater. Thank you. I'll continue. Uh, some therefore cried one thing and some another, for the assembly was confused, and the more part knew not wherefore they were come together. And they drew Alexander out of the multitude, the Jews putting him forward. And Alexander beckoned with the hand and would have made his defense unto the people. But when they knew that he was a Jew, all with one voice about the space of two hours cried out, Great is Diana of the Ephesians. And when the town clerk had appeased the people, he said, Ye men of Ephesus, what man is there that knoweth not how that the city of the Ephesians is a worshiper of the great goddess Diana and of the image which fell down from Jupiter? Seeing then that these things cannot be spoken against, he ought to be quiet and to do nothing rashly. For ye have brought hither these men, which are neither robbers of churches, nor yet blasphemers of your goddess. Wherefore, if Demetrius and the craftsmen which are with him have a matter against any man, the law is open and there are deputies. Let the men plead one another. But if ye inquire anything concerning other matters, it shall be determined in a lawful assembly. For we are in danger to be called in question for this day's uproar, there being no cause whereby we may give an account of this concourse. And when he had thus spoken, he dismissed the assembly. Chapter 20. And after the uproar was ceased, Paul called unto him the disciples and embraced them and departed for to go into Macedonia. So that's the Ephesian adventure. So where did Paul go? Well, he passed through the upper coasts of Asia, which would be Mycenae and Troas, and ended up in Ephesus. Of course, we know what happened there. This is quite the adventure. So I'm trying to capture it all. I may have missed a few people. I should have just said everybody, but I wanted to sort of pick and choose. So we met uh, diverse hardened Jews in the synagogue of the Jews. He probably met uh, the believing Jews too. There may have been those that followed him. There certainly were the disciples, which were 12 men, and they could be a lot more. We saw that he healed the sick, and there were evil spirits 
associated with the sick, so, so them too. And uh, then there were these vagabond Jews exorcists. And that always reminded me of that first journey when, when Paul uh, blinded uh, the, the Jew for a season and, he, and uh, converted the first Gentile, or at least a Gentile in Cyprus. Um, then it also says that all Jews and Greeks at Ephesus heard, heard of, of, of uh, Paul and his affairs, and many Jews and Greeks believed, including those who were practicing curious arts. The Silversmiths Guild, all of them knew about Paul, the whole city of Ephesus, and uh, certain chief men, uh, uh, chief of Asia, men of Ephesus, a guy named Alexander, who most likely was, was a, a disciple. Uh, Mark mentions an Alexander, and, uh, and we hear about him. And I'm not sure if that's the coppersmith, maybe someone else. Anyway, there was also Gaius and Aristarchus who were traveling with Paul. We never heard of them traveling with Paul. Uh, and maybe that's when he went up to Illyricum don't know, but uh, they mentioned Gaius Astarchus, Paul's companions in travel, and they mentioned that they were from Macedonia. So that could have been his adventure up the coast all the way up. And all Asia has heard this, so how many more? Uh, certainly uh, the word passed, even though it took 20 years maybe for Apollos to find out, this certainly uh, traveled quickly. How long was Paul in Ephesus. Well, he was three months at the synagogue before he was booted out, and then daily for two years at the school of Tyrannus, where uh, they must have had teaching and fellowship. So, so a good, you know, close to two and a half to three years, perhaps. This is, this is getting on. And what did he say or preach? So again, we're just trying to pull from, from the words. Uh, he, he boldly disputed and persuaded the things concerning the kingdom in verse 8. Uh, the word of the Lord Jesus, both to Jews and Greeks, see that in verse 10, did special miracles. So we're talking about signs and wonders, uh, which comes along with information to the Jew. Uh, he, I guess, preached Jesus, the name of the Lord Jesus. Um, he preached something to inspire the uh, people of curious arts to believe, confess, and show their deeds. And so we just see the output of something that was an input. And then he, the silversmiths, or the chief of them, Demetrius, knew that he preached that, uh, similar to in Athens, uh, that Paul said there be no gods made by hands, because that was his business. Anyway, so that's, that's quite interesting. So my observation is Paul was about three years in Ephesus, he would have written 1 Corinthians while he was there, which talks about the gospel of grace. Uh, likely 2 Corinthians in Acts 20, verse 1, because he's going into Macedonia, and he's actually preparing a trip to Jerusalem. And, um, and he was going to go by uh, Corinth. He sent a letter ahead. Uh, he sent Timothy and Erastus to Macedonia in advance. And then there may have been likely visits between Ephesus because it was so close. Ephesus, Macedonia, and Corinth, Greece, over the three years. Okay. So that's, that's it for Ephesus. Now we're just going to take a little adventure here, and I think we're almost done, uh, the traveling. And then we can open it up to questions. So we're going to look at the first six verses of Acts chapter 20. So Paul had sent Timothy and Erastus over to Macedonia and Greece. Uh, he stayed, and then this whole thing arose, so he left. After the uproar was ceased, Paul called unto him, and I'm reading the start of chapter 20, the disciples, and embraced them and departed for to go into Macedonia. That would have been Philippi. Uh, Thessalonica, Berea, and those parts. And when he had gone over those parts and had given them much exhortation, he came into Greece. That would have most likely been Corinth. And there abode three months. And when the Jews laid wait for him as he was about to sail into Syria, so he's going back to Jerusalem or Antioch, right? Syria. He purposed to return 
through Macedonia. So go back down to Corinth, back up to Macedonia, and then get to Syria. And there accompanied him into Asia. So that would be into Ephesus. So Peter of Berea and of the Thessalonians, Aristarchus and Segundus and Gaius of Derby and Timothy, Timotheus, and of Asia, Tychicus and Trophimus. These going before tarried for us at Troas. So all of a sudden Luke is in the party, right? So they went to Philippi, which is Macedonia, and then they went over to Troas and waited for Paul there. And we sailed away from Philippi, that's with Luke and the gang, after the days of unleavened bread and came unto Troas in five days. So they're going ahead to Troas, where we abode seven days waiting for Paul to come and meet them. So where did Paul go during this, uh, these verses? He went into Macedonia. And um, again, I'm always trying to figure out when he went to Illyricum. Uh, he came into Greece. And Cancrea is sort of a sister city of Corinth, Twin City, organized a group to deliver an offering to the poor saints uh, in Jerusalem. And I would like to read these verses just to give a feel for where we are in, in Corinth. We can, we can do that after. So whom did he meet? Uh, he met them, which would have been the Macedonian followers, most likely, those where he abode in Greece, he met Jews who were laying wait for him. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. It sounds like a bad thing. And those who were going to Jerusalem with them. And there's the list which we just itemized. How long was he there? Well, he needed time to get to Macedonia. He had three months in Corinth and five days in Philippi, seven days in Troas. There could have been some overlap. What did he say or preach? Well, he gave much exhortation, most likely wrote the book of Romans in verse 3 during that time there. And in Acts 19.21, we see he wants to go to Rome and Spain, but he wants to go the other way first, <laughs> via Jerusalem. And that's what we'll, we'll follow him later. Um, <clears throat> and there's some other verses to read that, that are references. So um, before we do some of this, uh, are there any questions? Would uh, Illichrome is up in the Macedonia area, right? Well, yeah. it's the west. It's up north of that. So that's Dalmatia, Croatia area. Okay, so we could assume that uh, that would be his second missionary journey that he was up there, right? I could have. It never mentions that part, right? Yeah, yeah, but and but like I think you're what was that you were saying earlier? It's because uh, Luke was silent about the mystery. Always, so, yes. So so then so because Luke was silent in the about the mystery, Luke never mentioned Paul's trip to uh, Illicrum. Uh Yeah, yeah. That that's that makes sense. He 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 threw in Athens for good measure. Yeah. Okay. But, that's what we're seeing here is we don't know like where are the disciples well they're here right we have a list of them where are the gentiles well we don't really see them they're not they're really anonymous aren't they yeah that's, they that's are the good. feeling i'm getting there's anonymous mm -hmm. like spain is really never mentioned you, nope. you, you know like spain's mentioned but that's it um again uh, there's there's a lot of things not not mentioned um just to get a flavor, maybe as, as we close, maybe we can just look at some of these other verses to get a feel for the uh, the letter content of of his journeys. So I think let's look First Corinthians nine, and we'll just just to get a feel for what he's writing, and obviously he's writing it during this time that we've been looking at, and so therefore the gospel of grace was was in his hands already again. Luke is, is silent on these things. It's quite interesting. I never thought of it like that, but uh, you, you can see it. Um, let's see, I've got 1 Corinthians 9, 1 to 5. Have I got the right one? Oh, maybe not. No, <laughs> again, 
was it second Corinthians? I'm sorry, second Corinthians nine, one to five. Yes, because he wrote the second letter getting ready for this trip. So second, uh, I've done it again. Second Corinthians nine, one to five. He's talking specifically about taking up an offering. I don't think I have it. No. So I'll read uh, 2 Corinthians 9, 1 to 5. For us touching the ministering to the saints, it is superfluous for me to write to you. For I know the forwardness of your mind for which I boast of you to them of Macedonia, that Achaia was ready a year ago, and your zeal hath provoked very many. Yet have I sent the brethren, lest our boasting of you should be in vain in this behalf, that as I said, ye may be ready. So obviously he says, well, if you got the money, let's go and get it. Um, as opposed to let it just sit there in a, in a bank account. Uh, lest, uh, verse four, lest happily if they of Macedonia come with me and find you unprepared, we, that we say not ye, should be ashamed in this confident boasting. Therefore, I thought it necessary to exhort the brethren that they would go before unto you and make up beforehand your bounty, whereof ye had noticed before that the same might be ready as a matter of bounty and not as of covetousness. So he's saying he sent someone beforehand, which is Timothy and Erastus, to just get them ready for the trip. So when Paul shows up, they can all uh, put a posse, put a, a team together and go to Jerusalem. So uh, the next verse, let's go to Romans. And this is where we get the idea that Phoebe of Cancria is, is delivering this letter uh, to the Romans because uh, you know, you can only sort of put two and two together to, 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 um, to time the letters. So Romans 15, 22, to 16.4. I think it just gives us a flavor of the persons involved. I'm wondering um, who could read for me? Karen's not sitting here. Um, Lucy, are you still there? You. Sorry. Um, forget it. Karen's here. Karen can read. Uh, she's a good reader. She's a good reader, yes. <laughs> she knows her grammar and her grandpa. Um, <laughs> So could you read 1522, 1522 to 16, five, say five, yeah, yeah, okay. If 22, you can, yeah, to 16, five. Yeah, yeah, I'll stop you. Okay. I'll kick you. <laughs> For which cause also I have been much hindered from coming to you. But now, having no more place in these parts, and having a great desire these many years to come unto you, when, whensoever I take my journey into Spain, I will come to you, for I trust to see you in my journey, and to be brought on my way hitherward by you, if first I be somewhat filled with your company. But now I go unto Jerusalem to minister unto the saints. Mm -hmm. For it hath pleased them of Macedonia and Achaia to make a certain contribution for the poor saints which are at Jerusalem. It hath pleased them verily, and their debtors they are. For if the Gentiles have been made partakers of their spiritual things, their duty is also to minister unto them in carnal things. When therefore I perform this and have sealed to them this fruit, I will come by you unto Spain. And I'm sure that when I come unto you, I shall come in the fullness of the blessing of the gospel of Christ. We can't yeah. hear you. Oh, okay. Yes, sorry. <clears throat> Gee, not very often people tell me to talk louder. <laughs> okay. Okay. Talk okay. Strong. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And I am sure that when I come unto you, I shall come in the fullness of the blessing of the gospel of Christ. Now I beseech you, brethren, for the Lord Jesus Christ's sake and for the love of the spirit, 
that ye strive together with me in your prayers to God for me, that I may be delivered from them that do not believe in Judea, and that my service, which I have for Jerusalem, may be accepted of the saints, that I may come unto you with joy by the will of God, and may with you be refreshed, now the God of peace be with you all. Amen. Chapter 16. I commend unto you Phoebe, our sister, which is a servant of the church, which is at Cancrea, that ye receive her in the Lord, as becometh saints, and that ye assist her in whatsoever business she hath need of you. For she hath been a succorer of many, and of myself also. Greet Priscilla and Aquila, my helpers in Jesus Christ, who have for my life laid down their own necks, unto whom not only I give thanks, but also all the churches of the Gentiles. Likewise, greet the church that is in their house. Salute my well beloved Ephanatius, who is the first fruits of Archaea unto Christ. That's yeah, and it goes on, but it's, uh, it gets very personal. So Phoebe delivers this letter, and it looks like Priscilla and Aquila are back in Rome, and they have a house church. And you see words like gospel of Christ, you see saints in Rome, right, referring to have become a saints. He's encouraging them, and he talks about all the churches of the Gentiles. So interesting it's it is interesting that we don't the gentiles the gentile gentiles are, are quite anonymous eh? but anyway that's that's all i have right now on to jerusalem rome spain and so on uh along the journey but that's that's all i have so i'll just open it up i think it's uh can i uh can i ask a, can i can i mention something yeah, go ahead. Uh, I was just, uh, w when you were bringing up, um, oh my gosh. Should I put the slide oh. back up? No, no, it's okay. When you were talking about um, about uh, about putting together the, the money to send to bring to the Jerusalem saints, right? Yes. Um, if we remember from the Gospels, sell everything you own, give alms to the poor. Yes. They 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 were being made a kingdom of priests and Levitical priests couldn't own property. So the Melchizedek priesthood, these Jerusalem saints, they couldn't own any property. So that's why they had to be supported by the uh by the by the converts abroad. Yeah. Oh, okay. My, my idea was that uh they had all things in common and no one lacked because they all shared together. That was at the beginning, but something changed. And, you know, they weren't, as it were, provided for. Yes, obviously they had to be provided for because they were the poor saints of Jerusalem, as opposed to those who didn't need anything because they were, right, bringing the kingdom in over the seven year tribulation period, which was postponed. Yeah. Yeah. So, but, um, yeah, so an interesting journey. Any other thoughts, questions, or comments? <clears throat> this was noting the language in chapter 16 about Phoebe, referred to as a sister, referred to as a servant of the church. So that that too is is a kingdom language. Yes. I mean, I think that's we're seeing a lot of kingdom kingdom language everywhere. Yeah, I mean, th um, this is this is here at the end of his of his letter to the Romans. He's still using kingdom language. Phoebe is a servant. But in, in verse four of 16, this is where it's interesting, where he talks about all the churches of the Gentiles. Again, it's not clear. There's churches yeah. in people's houses. There's right churches of disciples churches of the gentiles yeah well uh, so I've, I've i've become inclined to think now when i see the word gentiles 
it includes all the uncircumcision, but chiefly uncircumcised Hebrews. So when I read when I read a, uh, a verse, I read a phrase like "all the churches of the Gentiles." Right. Uh, I'm I'm inclined to understand that this is chiefly the churches of the uncircumcised Hebrews. 